Gatilov renews the Russian call for the start of political dialogue to solve the crisis in Syria. Syrian army units continue to chase terrorists, killing many of them and liberating hostages in Aleppo. And once again, terrorism targets Iraq, causing scores of dead and wounded victims in a series of explosions in several cities. Good afternoon. Russia renewed its support for Syria. The Deputy Foreign Minister of Russia, Mr. Gennady Yatilov, asserted Russia's call for the start of a political dialogue in Syria to solve the crisis. He wrote in his website that the UN Security Council and the UN Secretary General knows very well what should be done by members of the UN Security Council in discussion of the Syrian crisis. He asserted that the important thing now is not to search for collaborates but to start political dialogue at once through the means of mediation available to the UN. Mr. Katilov called upon all members of the Security Council to adopt the attitudes documented in the final communique of the Geneva meeting about Syria. Chairman of the Russian State Duma's International Affairs Committee, Alexei Boshkov, reiterated Russia's firm stance in the situation in Syria. During his meeting with the General Mufti of the Republic, Dr. Ahmad Badruddin Hassoun, and the Greek Orthodox Patriarchal Assistant, Bishop Luke al Khuri, at the Duma Council, Boshkov said that Russia adopts firm objective stances on Syria, and there is consensus between the executive and legislative authorities, the majority of parties and political social movements, and the sweeping majority of the Russian public opinion in this regard. For his part, the Mufti Hassoun hailed Russia's stance in support of the principles of rights and justice in Syria. In turn, Bishop Luka referred to the crimes committed by terrorist groups against peaceful citizens, Muslims and Christians who are destroying mosques, churches and wiping out entire families. Iranian Foreign Minister Ali Akbar Salehi discussed the current situation in Syria in a telephone call with the international envoy al akhdar al-Ibrahimi. Salehi said that Iran was seeking to find a peaceful solution to the crisis according to a Syrian resolution, away from any foreign intervention. He asserted Iran's readiness to help the international envoy in order to enable him to bring about stability and security in Syria. Mr. Ibrahimi stressed the positive role of Iran in the Syrian situation. He considered the political option as the only option to solve the crisis in Syria. He also expressed hope that all parties would cooperate to create security and stability in the country and in the region. He stressed the necessity of continuing consultations and efforts to find a peaceful solution to the crisis. In our local news, Syrian Arab army units continue to chase the remaining armed terrorists in several quarters in Aleppo in order to bring back safety and stability and security to the city and get rid of the crimes and attacks of the mercenary terrorists. A unit of armed forces clashed with terrorists near the Maisalun area, killing and wounding many of them. Our armed forces also carried out a qualitative operation in which it killed a number of snipers near Al-Ansar Mosque in Maisalun. Another unit of our armed forces targeted escaping groups towards the quarters of Al-Safa and Al-Sha'ar, killing most of them. They also liberated 30 kidnapped people from the armed terrorists. A group of terrorists destroyed a civilian house with mortar shells in the area of as -Sulaymaniya. Five passengers were killed and 35 others were wounded when terrorists targeted a bus with an explosive device near the village of al zaybaq along the road between Musyaf and Homs. The dead victims included a woman called Rasha Fahad Saeed and three others. The explosive device created a hole in the road nearly five meters deep. In a related context, the Syrian Arab army continued to chase armed terrorist groups with the aim of restoring security to several areas and clearing them of mercenary terrorists. An army unit killed a large number of armed men and arrested many of their leaders in their Al-Safir neighborhood in Damascus countryside. The army also confiscated a car loaded with 68 automatic rifles, two machine guns and ammunition in Aldmir. 
while in Homs, at least 15 citizens were injured when three Israeli-made mortars were launched by an armed terrorist group at al Midan neighborhood in the city. Meanwhile, the armed forces managed to liberate Khalid bin al-Walid school, which was taken by terrorists as a base for their criminal acts. The security forces chased the remaining mercenary terrorists in the western countryside of Dara, killing a large number of them. They also confiscated weapons, including RBGs and a large quantity of ammunition. Units of our army continued to chase the remaining terrorists in the Tadaman Quarter and the Palestine Street in Damascus. The operation led to the death of several mercenary terrorists who erected roadblocks and terrorized citizens. A terrorist hideout center to make explosive devices was captured. A number of such devices planted in the streets to terrify our people were defused. During this operation, a number of kidnapped citizens were freed. Two hundred and seventy seven persons who were misled and involved in the recent events, whose hands are clean of Syrians' bloods, were released after pledging not to carry arms again. A number of the released said that their release signals a new beginning for them to move on with their lives to build our society. Authorities at Beirut International Airport seized highly developed communication devices with three people who were aboard an Egyptian plane. The Minar TV channel said that the seized devices were similar to those seized a week ago aboard a Qatari plane, referring that the smugglers wanted to transport the devices from Lebanon to Syria. In Turkey, the Government of Justice and Development Party continued to subject the country to dangerous situations and to set up the Turkish army in battles against an illusory enemy in order to wriggle out of its failure to lead the country. Erdogan's government has shown its failure to find solutions for the internal problems in Turkey, which is witnessing escalating waves of violence. Erdogan is setting up his army in battles against an illusory enemy in the east of the country. The Turkish army started a military operation that resulted in the death of 26 Kurds and two Turkish soldiers. The victims of this failing policy exceeded 8,000 dead people, including 200 Turkish soldiers and a large number of civilians. This policy angered the Turkish people, who denounced the failure of their government to find solutions for the political and social problems. These policies are creating tension in the border areas because the Turkish government is intervening in the affairs of the neighboring countries and turning Turkey into camps for extremist terrorists in order to serve the sinister schemes of the West. The Iraqi authorities announced today the death of about 30 persons, including three Iraqi officers and the injury of tens of civilians and military personnel in a series of separate terrorist attacks in Iraq, most of which carried out by booby-trapped cars. To the north of the Iraqi capital Baghdad, 11 military personnel were killed, including two officers and eight military personnel were injured in an attack at a checkpoint near Balad town. A colonel in the army clarified that unknown armed men attacked a checkpoint near Balad town, which is 70 kilometers north of Baghdad. Afterwards, a terrorist planted an explosive device that was detonated when the backup force reached the place, killing 11 army personnel, including a lieutenant colonel and a major. In Kirkuk City, seven volunteers protected the oil facilities, were killed, and 17 others were injured in a terrorist explosion carried out with a booby-trapped car that targeted a gathering in front of the gate of the Northern Oil Company. And with this, we come to the end of our news for today. Stay tuned. After the break, Khalid Saqabani has the latest in economy. For more details, visit our website in English, www.syrianonline.sy.